What's up everybody, it's Sean here and I'm back today to give you guys a review of the Nike Blazer Mid 77 in the Move to Zero Cream colorway. So this pair dropped here in Canada on Nike.ca for a price of 145 Canadian dollars and they dropped also in the US for 110 USD. The official colorway for this shoe is Cream 2, Orange, Glacier Ice and Armory Navy. And this shoe is part of Nike's Move to Zero line, which is Nike's initiative to reduce their waste and their carbon footprint. So in fact, when you measure this shoe by weight, at least 20% is made out of recycled materials. So first things first, here's a quick look at the box, and this comes in this very simple brown colored cardboard box. In the top here, it describes Nike's Move to Zero campaign, and it reads, Move to Zero is Nike's journey towards zero carbon and zero waste to help protect the future of sport. And just like a lot of the other shoes in this Move to Zero line, they don't give you any paper or any extras inside the box. As for the shoe itself, so my very first impression is that this is a very lightweight sneaker. And I know some of you guys might not like hearing this, but my initial thoughts about this colorway was that it kind of reminded me of the original off-white Nike blazer from the original 10. Obviously with a little bit more added color and without that oversized swoosh. So diving straight into the details, the frontal half of the shoe is constructed in what feels like a synthetic suede, and to the touch has this felt-like feel to it. Overlaid on top of the front toe cap, we have this synthetic white-colored leather, and this leather covers the lateral side of the front half of the shoe as well. And then stitched on top of the mid panel of both sides of the sneaker, we have this navy blue colored swoosh which is constructed out of what feels like a synthetic leather. Underneath this on the back half of the shoe, this is covered in this ripstop nylon. And the panel near the center is done in this yellowed color, whereas the panel at the top and on the back heel, this is left in more of a true white. Underneath the nylon layer, we have Nike's Move to Zero pinwheel logo. And then covering the center of the back heel, we have more of that synthetic suede, and we have the word Nike embroidered across at the top in this orange finish. For the laces, so these come with these flat white colored laces, and underneath this, we have this padded nylon tongue, which is done in this vintage looking orange color. At the very top, we have this tag with Nike branding, and the outer edge of the tongue is exposed, which reveals the foam layer underneath. Taking out the insoles, these come with these foam insoles, which is layered with this green finish on the very top, and we have that pinwheel logo once again stamped on the heel. So the upper of the Nike blazer sits atop this solid rubber cup sole, which is constructed out of this semi-translucent rubber with this aqua colored tint. And because of the semi-translucent nature, even from the sides of the shoe, you can see Nike grind rubber from underneath. Turning the shoe over to the bottom, so here we have the classic traction pattern of the Nike blazer, except the outsole itself is constructed out of Nike grind rubber, which again is comprised of recycled materials and it has this multicolored effect to it, which becomes really obvious when you take a look at it real close. So for those wondering how these fit, so to me, these fit like pretty much all my other Nike blazers. So for most people, I'd recommend sticking true to size. Unless you have wide feet, then you might want to consider going up a half size. So I'm a true size 10, slightly on the wider side, and they fit me pretty well from a length perspective, but they're a little bit snug from a width perspective, but I think that they'll definitely break in over time. And for me, if I was to go up a half size, there'd be way too much space, and it would probably feel too sloppy for me on feet. Moving on to comfort, if you guys have worn the Nike Blazer before, you know that it's pretty stiff on feet. There's not too much from a softness and cushioning standpoint. You'll feel very stable and low to the ground. And I feel like that stays true for this shoe as well. The one major difference I felt was that this shoe felt a lot lighter than your normal blazer. I don't know if it's because of the recycled materials or the inclusion of the nylon panels, but like I said, these felt very lightweight in hand and they felt very lightweight on feet as well. Finally, from an overall quality and craftsmanship standpoint, overall the shoe felt pretty synthetic in hand and I guess this makes sense because at least 20% of the materials are recycled. So there's really nothing premium about the materials. Like I said, the suede felt like felt in hand and the leather for the swoosh and the toe cap also had a strong synthetic feel to it too. This being part of the Move to Zero campaign, quality of materials isn't really what they're going for. And with that said, the overall build and craftsmanship on this shoe was pretty solid, so I gotta give credit for them for that. So with all that out of the way now, let's lace these up and I'll show you guys how these look on feet.
All in all, I think this checks off a lot of boxes. It supports a really good cause. I think the colorway is really nice as well. And while I don't necessarily find the blazer in general to be that comfortable of a shoe, this pair was really, really lightweight as well, which was a nice added bonus. So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about this Nike Blazer Mid 77 and this Move to Zero Cream colorway. What are your overall thoughts on the colorway of this shoe and the overall look? Is this something you guys would wear or was this a straight pass for you? If you guys like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't yet. You can follow me on Instagram at esco8, check me out on Twitter at sean.go, and visit my website at seango.ca. You can also check out my podcast called The Channel 8 Podcast. So the video version is hosted right here on my YouTube channel, but if you're looking for just the audio only version, then you can check it out on most of your major podcast platforms, including Spotify, iTunes, and Podbean. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for the continued love and support. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this review and I'll catch you guys all in the next one.